everybody, it's Courtney. I'm here with a quick card using some Trinity stamp supplies. I'm going to be using the Succulent Sparkle stamp set as well as the Catching Some Rays stencil. And this is a layering stencil, but we'll just be using one. So we're going to be doing a little bit of coloring here with some with Copic markers, but we're going to be using different color families. So I'm stamping out some of the images from the Succulent Sparkle stamp set onto a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I'm using Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 because it is a Copic safe ink. I'm going to be fussy cutting these out later so I'm not too concerned about placement. So for the coloring, like I said, we're going to be using different color families and mixing them together. So we're going to start off simple with some greens and some blue greens. And you can see here that the colors that I chose, the ones that will go next to one another, have the same last number. So the BG10 and the G00 will blend nicely together because they both end in zero. So what I like to do is I like to work on one petal at a time and place down my lightest colors first on the top and bottom of the little petal there. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in some of that G03 towards the bottom or to the base of the petal and then a little bit of the BG13 on the very tip of the petal. Then I'm going to bring in my two lightest colors and blend those areas out. You may have to go back and forth a little bit to make sure that the colors blend, especially those lightest colors, but usually for the BGs and the Gs, they blend very nicely together because obviously they both have some greens. Now, some of these petals will be pretty saturated once you have all of those colors down and you may have to go back and forth a little bit. So you may have some bleeding, especially depending on the cardstock that you're using. Even though I'm using Nina, which I prefer for Copic marker coloring, I did have just a little bit of bleeding because of the amount of saturation that I'm putting down on the paper. Being I'm fussy cutting these out, I'm not too concerned about it. I can either take a colorless blender and fix those areas up once they're dry or I can take a white gel pen, which is usually the easiest, quickest and easiest anyway. <laughs> so I finished up this succulent here using the same color combination and same technique. We're gonna move on to the next one here. And this time we're gonna be using some Gs, YGs and Ys. So you can see that we'll progress from the, G, the greens, the yellow greens, and then the yellows. But like I said, those last numbers are either the same or maybe one off and you should get a good blend. Again, gonna start off with my lightest colors here. I'm using the YG06 on the bottom and the Y08 on the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my shadows here. The G07 will be on the base of these, this little petal here. And then I'm bringing in the Y35 for the very tip of the petal. Next, I'm gonna go in back in with my lightest colors and get those YG and the Y to blend a little bit. And you can see once I added that green, eh, they didn't really blend so well. So going back in with that Y08 and having creating more of a seamless blend for where the greens meet the oranges, or not the oranges, the yellows. So again, I'm gonna show you one more petal here doing this the same exact way. And then I will finish up this entire succulent using the same color combination with that same technique. Next, we are going to move on to the final succulent that I actually used in the card. And we are going to use some greens, blue greens, and then move on to the blues. So we're gonna pretty much do this the same way, but this time I'm going to take the B00, which is the lightest color of them all, and I'm gonna cover up the entire petal. And I'm just getting the paper saturated. The more it's saturated, the better it'll blend. Adding the green on the very base of it, blending that out a little bit with the BG marker, then the B02, and leaving the very tip of the petal for that B00. Now, I am using a flicking motion, but you can, as you can see for the second petal here, I'm not. I'm just going to add basically a straight line of color each and every time, and you can see that you get very similar results. So if you haven't mastered that flicking motion, no worries, you can still accomplish this technique. So once all of my coloring was done, I went ahead and fussy cut those out. And next we are gonna move on to a very simple background. So like I said, for the stencil, this is a layering stencil. I'm just gonna take this one layer here, taking another piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock, and this is cut down to an A2 size already. 
going to run this through my die cutting machine and I am using the same sandwich I would use as if I were embossing with a die. So I'm going to use the little rubber mat here. Depending on what die cutting machine you use, this will differ. I use a Gemini, so it may be a little bit different depending on what machine you use. But you can see that I have uh, an embossed background here. It's kind of hard to see on camera. Hopefully in the still photos you can see it a little bit better. So I ended up trimming down my panel just a little bit. I took a eighth of an inch off of each of the sides to make sure that that stencil was still centered the way I wanted it to be. And then I'm going to take a black piece of cardstock that is just slightly larger than my card panel, but slightly smaller than my card base itself. I like to have a little tiny bit of a black border on my card bases. To me, it just really makes the images and the background really pop. So I'm going to use my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere this down to my A2 size note card. And you can see that I have a small black border and then a small white border. And to me, that just makes it look, I don't know little it really makes it pop so I'm going to take another piece of black cardstock here i treated this with my anti-static tool and then i will stamp my thank you from that same stamp set with versamark ink sprinkle on some white embossing powder and then i will go ahead and heat set that and trim that down to a sentiment strip using my tonic trimmer here i like to use the little one for smaller strips of sentiments i guess then I'll go ahead and arrange my little succulents here right in the center. I want this to be in the center of that little sun ray, I guess you could call it. I trimmed down my sentiment strip on both sides. On one side, I did cut it at an angle just because I like the look of that. I'm going to go ahead and glue down two of the succulents flat, and then I will pop up that third one with some foam tape along with the sentiment as well and keeping that sentiment off to the right-hand side a little bit. I have finished off the card adding some sparkle with a Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen, which you can and probably should do this before adhering your succulents down because it's kind of hard to fit that pen into those areas like underneath the succulents. But I should know this by now. I add sparkle to everything. <laughs> but that is the card for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day. Bye.